my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I see, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in the temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His tabernacle and set me high up on a rock that my head will be exalted above the enemies who shouts of joy i will sing and make music to the lord god hear my voice when i call O lord be merciful to me and answer me my heart says to you seek his face your face lord i will seek wait for the lord be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Dearly beloved, I welcome you to this Thanksgiving service for the life of the late MacLaurin Oliver. From the time I knew him, he was always simple and humble as an individual. What is more outstanding was is that at some point in his life, he surrendered it all to the Lord Jesus. So that when his death came, as we know, suddenly and tragically, he was ready to go home, home to be with the Lord. You see, my dear people, the family of God is never broken by death. All that happens when a believer dies, his home. Others of us who are here in this body, we are on the road unto whom. Earth is a desert dread. Heaven is our fatherland. Heaven is our home. But the Bible tells us, blessed or happy in the dead in the Lord. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. So when we trust Christ as our Redeemer and Savior and death comes, it is as the Apostle Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And so today as we pay our last respect is mortal remains. <laughs> Because our brother is not here, you know. It is only his mortal remains we have with us to remind us of the man who lived in that body. He is at home, as the hymn writer put, safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast. That is why we are gathered here today to pay our last respect to one who lived and dwelt among us. He was just an ordinary man. He had no accolades assigned to him, but he lived a simple, godly life. And that is what is worthy of him. Having said those words, let me now open in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless and praise thy name. We thank you for salvation so full, so free. We thank you for the life 
of our brother, the one who has parted this life and has gone into eternity. O oh God, at this time, we ask that you comfort his dear wife, children, relatives and friends. But we know that from your word, absent from the body, present with the Lord, and we sorrow not as others who have no hope. O oh God, we thank you for the assurance you have given to us that one day we shall see him again, for we shall all be together around the throne of God. Father, we thank you. Pray that you bless everything that we do here, the songs, the tributes, the scriptures, that are to be read and a message from our dear brother. May our hearts be lifted to you in these moments and grant us all a very blessed day. For we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. At this time we have the hymn, To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory.
seated. And I know this may be a sad occasion. But we can still say to God be the glory. Amen. Great things he has done. Because even though some of us might be mourning the loss of a life. We can celebrate that because God gave us his son. Amen. And because God gave us his son. That he gave us all opportunities to become children of God. And that's why we can celebrate today even though it's a very sad occasion. At this time we're going to have some open tributes. And we're going to have family and friends. Including Gillian and Leslie. And we are going to ask all three persons, family and friends to come make some short tributes on behalf of our brother. family, rel relatives and friends deemed him to be. The letters I spell his name are M C L A W R E N C E. And to us, the M means he was a motivator. The C, he was confidential. The L, he was loving and loyal. The A, he was always available. The W, he was a workaholic. The R, he was reassuring. And the E, he was everyone's friend. The N, he was a no-nonsense person. The C, he was a counselor. And he, E, he was very energetic. A lot, a lot of people might not know that during his early days, he was more than an average cricketer. This is the picture of the person of the person we have. This is the picture we have of our uncle, and one we will always treasure for the rest of our lives. May he rest in peace. Amen. Because 
the four years that I know Mr. Olivier because of a very good friend of Mr. Olivier. His name is Joel Paddy Morgan. They are close. They're not just friends, but they are like brothers. And I stand here just to share a few words on behalf of Paddy Morgan because he could not make it. He's a diabetic. So he tell me to do all the necessary things and then bring it back to him. And that's what I'm doing here. And I just want to say, you know, the Mr. Olivier and, and Paddy Morgan, Joel, being schoolmate, line theater, play cricket theater. So they were extremely just, they were like brothers. And I just want to say that on behalf of my dog Paddy, Morgan, myself, who get to know him just four years, I just want to say my, my deepest condolence to the, the Dolly Bear family and to the others extended family. May God continue to bless you all and strengthen you. Even this difficult time we are living, God promised that never to leave us, nor forsake us, but he always make us empty the end of the age. I know Mr. Olivier gone to a better place. I pray God that you know his soul rests in peace. He was actually a very quiet and nice individual when I get to know him. I could not believe when I heard the news because I normally travel go to Mr. Morgan resident and we talk and get here and do things and Mr. Olivier. When I get the news three days after he tell me to sit down. Sit down, sit down, God and sit down. I said, what happened? Sit down. He said, Well, my best friend, God. My best friend. She's my best friend. So I get to, I sit and I realize, oh, it's Mr. Olivier. So he said, yes. I said, boy, what? And then he started to give me all the details. That's how life is. One time we're here, another time we're here. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. Let me say good morning to the our soul of faith and all those who have come out to faith. Yeah, last respect. First of all, let me express my personal condolences to his wife and the rest of the family. A tribute to the late McLaren Sullivan of Lacroix, Fay Hall and Golden Day. Let me first quote some words from scripture. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had formed the earth and the world. The days of our lives are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength there will be four score years, is their strength labor? and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Today, as we reflect on McLaren's life, we are thankful for the three score and ten plus three years. Even though it was cut off in the strength in great sorrow to his life, his children, family, friends, and has fly away for us. He is no longer with us. The McLaren's I knew goes way back when I was a teenager and he was a teenager. This was my early traveling days to Calapa to deliver chocolate for my mother. His mother was one of the clients. Also around the same time, we were both students at the secondary school in Manor High School to King Kong. Sm smelling, as we call him, I reflect as a young teenager, 
He was a physically strong, sturdy youngster. He did not stay long in school. Later on night, he told me it was a deliberate decision on his part. He felt it was better for him to see him for me. His love of sports. Let us speak about his love of sports. He played competitive cricket for prisoners. He also played a lot of cricket at the Calipar playing field along the likes of Azul Nantan, Paddy Thomas, Gray, and many more. He also played football. In fact, in his later years, he went and used it as a workout exercise. Like anyone who went to Emmanuel, he was a good volleyball player. He knew not only play sport, but was a student and cricket. And cricket, especially a cricket. The prison officer. Smelling work as a prison officer. In, convol in conversation with him, he appeared, appeared to be a strict disciplinary. And the respect of the prisoners. He always cherished for independence and wanted the farmer. His activities in farming, which was mainly livestock, his trademark was cutting grass and transporting it in his pickup. He made the road more possible for many pedestrians and a lot easier for drivers to see approaching vehicles. He cut grass at the time. His reason was they go back quickly when you cut them out. I must mention what he said about one of his helpers. He absorbed OT. He laid OT to operate He got in and paid him. His view was, as the World Cup says, by the sweat of your brow. Enough animals had its own challenges. Tweeting and Larson being one of them. He related this incident to me. One of his calls was, slowed, was stolen from a guy in Ibishan. Was stolen by a guy from Ibishan. And a certain butcher to whom the stolen animal was. He was the stolen butcher carry him and show him where the animal was. He was convinced that the butcher had something to do with it. McLaren's the family, the man the family. McLaren's was a straight talker in many ways. I recall in conversation with him about his wife, his first wife. And he just said she was a redskin from Rochester Head. From all appearances and discussion, he loved and appreciated his present wife and children. I must point out devotion of him and his wife to his mother. It cannot be overemphasized how he is committed, how he was committed mature, to the maternal mother of the family who lived five, uh, five score years for seven. Mm -hmm. To the best of my knowledge, he visited her every morning and afternoon. This was admirable for him in a society where most people first uh, find it a lot more convenient to put their seniors in their home. He and his wife, and the other lead family did not do that. His father, his faith, and religious belief. 
I cannot speak much of his faith. However, what I do know, when anyone questioned him if he was a Christian, he would just reply, he was not a Christian. He, he had the attitude who said that they were churches, Christian, he was rather disappointed sometimes in the way they lived, those who said they were Christian. In fact, he felt that the church had too many hypocrites. Another concern of him about the church, he lamented the Teddy Evangelist, whose main concern was to make money. Instead of being their brother's keeper and sowing seeds and make winning souls for Christ, I'm more concerned about money. Conclusion. So we conclude as we say farewell to a husband, a father. A family man and a friend. A sports loving player and enthusiast. A father above all. A very decent, humble human being. Once again, let me take this opportunity to express my sincere condolences, condolences and sympathy to his wife, children grandchildren, brothers, sisters, other relatives and friends, and all those whose life we touch. That is just a phase. As you pass on to the higher calling in Christ Jesus, may his soul rest in peace. My name is Jillian Leslie, and today I'm here standing to represent one of my parents' nephew who lives in the U.S. And because of all these uh, strict protocols, he couldn't be here today. So I come to bring you his tribute. To say I love my uncle would be an understatement. To say I am going to miss him would be an even greater understatement. I consider myself one of the one of the luckiest person in the world to have been so fortunate to be graced by your presence and the influence you had in my life. You were like a father to me. While some people are blessed to have one father, I was blessed to have two. And for that, I remain eternally grateful to have shared these memories with you. You were one of the greatest teachers in my life. Your lessons were not of arithmetic or literature, but on conduct, humility, and gratitude. We did not rummage to the most valuable lesson any man can learn on love, finance, and family. These lessons prepared me and taught me how to maneuver this ever meandering world we travel called life. I can firmly remember at a tender age when you taught me how to ride a motorcycle, a social taboo that only you could view as a lesson in courage. There was always much fun to be had in playing a game of cricket in the streets. Again, in your own way, teaching a lesson on strategy, competitiveness, and the will to keep going even when your wickets are numbered. And today, I keep going even when I have lost one of my strongest Batman batsman at the stump. You have such a great sense of humor. 
never afraid of having a laugh at your own expense. Just four days before your untimely passing, we had we had one of our, our marathon chats. Always your jolly self. There was never a doubt that you are a man that plays country above self. As we often talk about your love for this day high ruin. Little did I know it will be our last job together. The great Martin Luther King once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and con convenience, but where he stands in the times of challenge. If I am to measure you, my dear sir, there is no yardstick that can account for your selflessness, kindness, and love for a family. Always the formidable pillar of strength in our times of need, never expecting anything in return. Words can't describe this difficult moment, but if this is the last time I'm, I get to say goodbye, with a heavy heart, I salute you and thank you for all you have done for me. We thank the Lord for your life and bid you farewell. To Amelia and kids, I pray that you stay strong. The God will not take you where the grace of God will not protect you. A dream I'm done, but stay the whole day that by my side you remain forever there. Unseen, I will just add a little bit because Everett has spoken for all of us. And spelling, he was. I, I told him as my brother in law in the days. He was a father to my children and he was a counselor. He was my advisor. advisor. He was a good man. As I bent over to view him, as I enter, you know, I touch him, but there is this humor that just built up to me, and I know he must have been saying, girl, are you look so good in Elaine hat? <laughs> with, with that distinctive grin on his face, that's why I wrote today, my day smelling, sleep on, sleep on until that great resurrection morning. Yeah. Morning everyone. Uh, this is a tribute from his two nieces in Canada, Ashaki and Aflin. Um, it goes, it's been 20 days since you left us. 20 days of trying to cope with the pain of losing such a sweet and gentle soul. 20 days of trying to understand why God took you away. But we can never fathom the Almighty, nor comprehend His ways. God said it was your time, and so He ushered you away, and now you are resting in His arms. Uncle Smellin, you are a beacon of light, a kind and beautiful soul, who left an indelible mark on all our lives. Your kind words, sweet smile, laughter, and your black bag of goodies, invaluable advice, and everything, and everything else about you will truly be missed. We'll never forget you and our lives will never be the same. It's hard for us to let you go even though we know we must. But your Creator needs you most right now for He has heavenly work for you to do. But first, He needs to give you your celestial wings. We bid you farewell for now until one day we shall meet you again. Sleep in eternal peace, our beloved Uncle Smellin. We'll love you forever. And um, Ashaki said that this afternoon at 3.30 you have to go see Mother and Uncle Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you for those tributes. At this time we have a poem by the grandson, Jura. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm 
Aventura va a I stare through the mouth of his, I know you're in a better place. I close my eyes to see your face, suddenly I feel a warm embrace. With his smile so wide, it brings tears to our eyes. All the pain which we cannot hide. You always knew what to say to anyone having a body. I don't know if I will ever understand, but it must be part of God's plan. As I look up towards the blue sky, I imagine you spreading your wings to fly. Be sure to give. Your mom is saying, so she knows when you're in heaven and everything is fine. Tell me one day, I send my love to all of the angels up above. As tears roll down our face, I know you're in a better place. Amen. The song is blessed with a special song by our sister Elfrida Joseph. Good morning again everyone. This song was specially requested by Auntie Amelia, wife of the deceased. Tears will never stay in the streets of that city. If I could count the tears that have fallen, it will seem like an ocean. My heart has the window you can look through. All the pain and scars you will see, but tears will never stay the streets of that city.
it might be painful, even though it might be sorrowful now, we are assured that there will be no tears in heaven. And that's something that we can thank God for. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time we will have at this time we'll have Mrs. Mother George, his daughter, to come and do the eulogy. Blessed are those who know they will be comforted. A blessed day, everyone. I'm Mavan, daughter of Mr. Mac Lawrence Oliver, and I want to thank you all for including those viewing on the live stream. Today we celebrate Admiral Life, and I'm honored to be doing. My dad was born on the 14th July 1947. He was the fifth of six children. He spent his primary school years at the Calico Anglican School, where he was part of the Calico Scout Street. He then took up secondary learning at the Emmanuel High School, Kingston. After school, dad did a short stint in the Antigua Police Force before moving back to St. Vincent and joined Her Majesty's prisons as a prison officer. He later transferred over as a bailiff at the Inland Revenue Department. After retiring as a bailiff, my dad took up farming, which he loved and did up until he died. Amen. One of the many things dad learned from farming was the art of making his own ham, a craft he honed for as long as I can remember. It initially started off as a trial, then unexpectedly turned into a festive family tradition as word quickly spread of his ham making. Visiting relatives and friends would seek him out to place their orders, looking forward to a sample of his hams to fill their taste buds. Amen. He wasn't big on cooking either, but boy did he make the best fish broth. Amen. Daddy had a love for sports, in particular cricket. He played many matches around St. Vincent during his primal years and was always glued to a television or radio whenever there was a cricket match on. His nephews remembers going to daddy's house on weekends to help out with his animals. As a treat for their hard work, he would take them to a cricket match, which also afforded them a chance to enjoy a bit of male bonding. My older siblings can recall daddy as a calm-natured soul and one not to hold grudges. When they decided to take the path and seek greener pastures, the advice that he gave has stuck with and carried them through this journey called life. Mm -hmm. While chatting with my mom last week, she began reminiscing on their courting years, which involved many moonlit walks and drives where they'll discuss future ambition and indulge in their favorite treats of barbecue pork, sanatogen wine, and peanuts. My parents had a solid relationship and I'm humbled by my mom's strength over the past week and her ability to focus on the remarkable life she shared with my dad and not dwell on what you have lost. Amen. Daddy will be remembered for his kind and simple nature. I wish I had that, unfortunately I don't. He was the man of business for his brother who lives abroad and always gives sound advice to his family members and close friends. Amen. Reminiscing on their younger years, his sister described him as her protective big brother Amen. and as not having a bad bone in his body. Amen. I think everyone who knows my dad can relate to that statement. Amen. All the taken from us so suddenly, Mac Lawrence lived a full life and richly impact the life of those he came in contact with. Today, I take comfort. I take comfort in knowing that my dad is with the Lord. Amen. Take your rest, dad. You have done well. Amen.
Thank you, my Warren. A very poor week for you. On behalf of our dad. And we just pray that his life would impact those of us who are still here. At this time, we'd have our first scripture reading, and that will be done by his daughter, Keisha Graves. Good morning, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Amen. At this time we have a congregational hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Shall we all stand? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly leave on Jesus' name.
thou soul gives way, he then is all our hope and stay. Amen. At this time we'll have a second scripture reading and this will be done by Gwyneth Lewis, the niece of our dear brother. the word of God written in Revelation chapter 21 verses 4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away the word of the Lord Amen. This morning, or this afternoon, I want to speak to you just for a brief moment. And our scripture reading, we have two passages of scripture that I want to read from. And the first is taken from James chapter 4 and verse 14. And it reads, Whereas he know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth. And the second scripture reading is taken from Hebrews 9:27. And it reads, And it is appointed unto man the judgment. God, we pray that you speak to us this afternoon. We pray, oh God, that whatever lessons you'd have us learn from the passing of our brother, Mark, I pray that each one of us would learn today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, death is never easy. No matter how much we are prepared for death, it is something that we find it very hard to come to grips with. But this morning we can thank God, or this afternoon we can thank God, that we serve Him who is the God of all comfort. Amen. We serve a God of whom we can say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear Amen. no evil. Amen. Because He is with us. Amen. His rod and His staff, He comfort us. And for you, members of the family, relatives and close friends, I want you to know this morning or this afternoon that you have a God in your corner who promises to be with you to the very end. Amen. You have a God in your corner who says that even though you go through the storm, even though you go through difficult periods, even though you go through the waters and the fire, he will be with you so that these difficult moments would not overwhelm you and that is the assurance that you have this morning Amen. god is with you and god is going to help you through this difficult period now when i heard of the passing of our dear brother immediately my mind went to this scripture for what is your life he was just in church the Sunday and then the day after he's no more what is your life and his sudden passing I believe for all of us and that message for us is make it right while you have the time Amen. make it right while you have the time and if you forget anything I said today I want you to remember this one thing make it right 
while you have the time. Because you just never know. It made plans. They had a place. They had a promise. They had programs. They had purpose. But they did not involve God. And this passage teaches us two things. And the first thing it teaches us is the brevity of life. And what he's saying, life is brief, life is short. And life in this passage is likened unto a vapor. And if we know a vapor is short-lived, you see the, the, the vapor, you see the mist, one moment, and it is gone. Early morning when you're drinking your hot tea, you see the steam rising, and after, it is gone. And those of us who are young, uh, when we were young, when we blow those bubbles, those soapy bubbles, they only appear for a time, and then they are gone. Life is very brief. And in the book of Job, it says, um, chapter 40 says, Man who is born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. There's a word and um, some words of a hymn that says, Life at best is very brief. It is just like the falling of a leaf. And the hymn writer encourages us to be in time. Life is brief. And that's why we're encouraging you today to make it right while you have the time. And it was Michael Jackson in reflecting on life. He sang like a comet blazing across the evening sky. Gone too soon. Like a rainbow fading in the twinkling of an eye. Gone too soon. Shiny and sparkly and splendidly bright. Here one day, gone one night. Like the loss of sunlight on a cloudy afternoon. Gone too soon. Like a castle built upon a sandy beach. Gone too soon. That is the reality of life. Life is brief. Life is short. As a matter of fact, in Psalm 90, Moses recounting on the brevity of life. He compares life to grass. And what he says, the grass is there in the morning and by evening it is gone. And that is why in those, that same chapter Moses said, Lord teach us to number our days. Lord teach us to take stock of our lives because life at best is very brief. And that is why we're encouraging you today, make it right while you have the time. In Chronicles, First Chronicles 29:15, it says, "Our days are as a shadow." Job 7:7 7, 7 says, "Remember, my life is wind." Psalm 39:5 says, "Thou hast made my days as a hand breath." Psalm 102 verse 3 says, For my days are consumed like smoke. That tells about the brevity of life. Life is short. And Amy Carmichael wrote, We have plenty. We have eternity to celebrate the victories. We have eternity to celebrate. But only. So even though we have a whole eternity to celebrate the victories, we have a very short period in which to accomplish those. Life is brief. Life is short. Carl Sandburg described it best when he said, Time is the coin of your life. It is the only coin you have. And only you will determine how it will be spent. And the fact and the reality is that we have a very short time to spend that coin. You alone 
can determine how you spend that coin called life. And you only have a very short time to do it. And that is why we are saying this, this afternoon, make it right while you have the time. Because life at best is very brief. The second thing that the passage in James teaches, it teaches not only about the brevity of life, but it also talks about the uncertainty of life. The uncertainty of life. In that nobody knows how long a vapor would last. It disappears and it disappears at different times. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. And that was a mistake that these men in James, these businessmen in James made. Because what they didn't understand is that you may be young, you may be healthy, and you could be here this morning, and you could be a corpse by the evening. That is how life is uncertain. And these businessmen that James were talking about, he was saying that, these men, they thought about success, they had goals, they had plans, which was good. But they did not take into consideration that they had no control over their lives. They did not take into consideration that life could be taken from them at any moment. I remember a number of years ago, I had a very good friend of mine. And we played sports together. And we had stopped playing as often as we used to. And we were planning to do or make a comeback. And we started exercising and all of that and getting back in shape. And one day, he left an establishment in town where we were accustomed to hang out. And he said he would be back. And he jumped on his back. And he never made it home. That is how life is uncertain. In the book of Luke chapter 12, read about this rich fool. He said he had everything that he needed. And in his mind he wanted nothing else. Because his ground, his land brought forth so much. That he said, I will tear down these small bands and build some bigger ones. And I will say to my soul, well, you have everything you need. Sit back, relax, enjoy, because you have so much ahead of you. But the word of God says, little did he know that that very night his soul would be required of him. Little did he know that that very day that death would come knocking at his door. We have no promise of tomorrow. Regardless of our age, our health, our position in church, our status, we have no guarantee of tomorrow. Life is uncertain. Life is just like a vapor. And that is why we are encouraged. Make it right. John Blanchard explained it well when he said, a man is born, he begins to die. And death could come at any time by design, disease, disaster. Nobody knows. Life is uncertain. Life is uncertain. Make it right while you have the time. The passage in Hebrews talks about the reality of life after death. So James talked about the brevity of life, the uncertainty of life, and now the passage in Hebrews talks about the reality of life after death. Why do we need to make it right while we have time? Because the word of God says here, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death comes the judgment. And what he is saying here is, death is not 
the end. There is a judgment. Yeah. And every single one of us would have to stand before God and give an account of the life that we have lived. Yeah. Life is brief. Life is uncertain. We all have to stand before God and give an account. Yeah. And I know a lot of persons are of the view that when you're dead, you're done. But the Bible says it here that after death comes judgment. All of us will have to stand before our maker and give an account of the life that we have lived. And it says those who made it right would live eternally in heaven with God. But those who did not use the time to make it right with God, they would spend eternity in hell. Yeah. And what our brother's life teaches us is that life is uncertain. And that is why every opportunity that we have, we have to ensure that we make it right with our God. Because we just never, never know. So in the end, there are two things I want us to understand. If life is brief, if life is uncertain, if all of us have to stand before God on judgment day, it is very important that you make your life count. Don't waste your life away. It is very important that while you have time, that you make your life count, that you make an impact on the lives of other persons. It is very important that you forgive. It is very important that you make amends because life could be taken away from you before you have the opportunity to do that. You have to use your time wisely and make an impact, make your life count. And I want you to understand now that God created you for a purpose. God created you to make an impact. And what we want or the message here is that while you have time, make an impact, make your life count for something good. But most importantly, or more importantly, Ensure that you make it right with God. Ensure that you make it right with God. And there's a verse in Amos that says, Prepare to meet thy God. Amen. Ensure that if and when your turn comes, that you are ready to be with your God. That when you stand before God, He will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Make it right with God. That is the most important thing that you can do with your life. I remember hearing a reading of a story. It is reported that Colonel Ralph, Colonel Ra Ralph, commander of the British troops in Trenchtown, New Jersey, he was playing cards when he, a courier or a messenger brought news to him that General George Washington had crossed the river at Delaware. But he was playing cards. So you know what he did? He put the letter uh, in his pocket until his card game was finished. And then when it was done, he took out the letter. And when he read it, he realized the seriousness of the message. So what he did, he gathered his troops together to go and fight. But it was too late. His procrastination caused many persons to die. Later, it says that Norbert Quail, when he gave a report of that incident, you know what he said? Only a few minutes delay cost him his life his honor and liberty of his soldiers. And I read it again. Only a few minutes delay cost him his life, his honor, and the liberty of his soldiers. 
a few minutes delayed. Life is brief. Life is uncertain. You don't know how long you have here. And a few minutes delayed could mean eternity in hell if you have not made it right while you have the time. So this afternoon, our takeaway from his life, life is brief, life is uncertain, there is judgment after death. And if you are here, or if you are listening to me, if you have not yet make, made it right with God, our encouragement to you today, make it right with God while you have the time. Amen. Because you just never know. Amen. God bless us for his name's sake. Amen. This morning I just want this afternoon I just want to pray for the family as we close. So just family, you could just stand so that we can pray with you, pray for you. And again, we just want to assure you that God is in your corner. That you have a faithful God whom you can depend on. Father God, we just bow in your presence this afternoon, God. And God, we know that you are the one who giveth life and you are the one who taketh life. And God, even right now, some of us uh, some members of the family may not even yet be able to come to grips with the passing of their loved one. But we know that someday, in the sweet by and by, we shall understand why. And even now, God, we pray for your strength. We pray, oh God, for your comfort. We pray, oh God, that you'd meet every need right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, oh God, that you'd provide persons to come around and give them the support that they need right now, God. And Father, I pray, oh God, that we'll continue to look to you for strength. Continue to look to you, oh God, who is um, their comforter, oh God. And God, I pray even now, God, that those who know you as Lord and Savior, that their lives will be encouraged, oh God. That they, oh God, would come to live for you and would be encouraged even to serve you even more, God. We pray for those who might not know you as Lord and Savior. We pray, oh God, that today they would make it right while they have the time. And God, we give you glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Right, for the recessional, we we'll sing the song in the sweet by and by and when we get to the second verse we will um, begin the recessional and please as you know the coffin goes out first followed by the ministers and the family and then you
There's somebody over there. Yo. Somebody go there, son. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it.
We don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. Sorry, sorry. Or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Let me and you. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep according to his own word. We tell you that we do we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not be preceded those who are falling asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first after we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord forever therefore encourage yourself with these words Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable had been clothed with the imperishable, imperishable and the mortal with the immortality then the saying that is written will come true death swallowed up in the victory where or oh, death is your victory where or oh, death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to god he gives us victory through our lord jesus christ therefore my brother dear brothers stand firm let nothing move you Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord Amen. because you know that your labor Amen. is not in vain. Amen. For as much for as much as it pleased for as much as it pleased Almighty God it is great mercy to take unto himself our dear brother Mark. We are therefore now committing his body to the ground. Hello, I am. Um, I respect you. I respect you. And to respect, I don't want this thing going on. For as much as it please the Almighty God, in His great mercy, to take unto his, Himself the soul of our dear brother. We therefore commit His body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure hope of the resurrection through the Lord Jesus Christ who by the power that enabled him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be look, we will be like his glorious body wonderful world beautiful people sorry 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 sorry, 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 sorry.
fool them will come to come to serve No, 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 no. Come help now. We're supposed to get ahead. You get ahead one.
Come to the sir. a lot more viewing we are coming towards the end of our live stream now so we are going off here in a couple of seconds so have a pleasant good afternoon and all the best we are going offline now <laughs>